We are competitive in race after race in this state, the Republican and conservative parties merging to try to move government back to a more common sense spot that you know people can better interact with. A government that's there for you as opposed to a government that's there to get you. is that we have a state government that politically manages itself by essentially causing potential voters against it to decide they want to move to another state. And if I was a political, if I was a political consultant, I'd say, well, that's a hell of a strategy. Let's get rid of anybody who could possibly vote against it, us by making it impossible to live here. And that seems to be this governor's strategy. This seems to be this legislature's strategy. And we cannot allow that be, to be successful. We need to change that perception and let people know that we are on the comeback. I wanted to also now talk just a little bit about Governor Pataki um, and the what he, I think he has meant to, meant to our state. And really, that 12-year period that I consider the period of excellence and, uh, and something that it, took, it really took them a lot of years to unravel a lot of things you did, Governor. But let me tell you, they keep on trying. But you did so many good things, and you gave us a period of time in the state that I think we can look back at very proudly. I know I look back at your tenure very proudly. For 57 years, the New York State Conservative Party has a lot of great moments, a lot of great victories. And we made a difference in this state. I could go through year to year and identify various victories, various ups and downs. But in 1994, one of the most crucial times in our state, when this state was being led by then the most outspoken liberal in the nation, one individual called Mario Cuomo. And the Conservative Party searched for a candidate. There was a guy who was a former mayor, an assemblyman, a state senator, a state senator who's basically just got elected, voted against every tax increase that was proposed by the governor the Assembly and the Senate. The polls on the day before election had them down. I, I can't remember, I think it was 12, 15 points. But you had the faith in him. You believed in the future of the state of New York, and he believed in our future. And if there was ever a great moment for the New York State Conservative Party, is when we elected the governor of the state of New York with the margin of victory on the Conservative Party line. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Governor George Pataki. I've been in politics a while in this state, and there are a lot of parties in this state, including the Republican and the Democratic Party, I have never known a more effective, better chairman of any party over that entire time than Mike Long. Mike, you have been the best. Thank you. And now, of course, Jerry's going to pass you. So, Jerry, congratulations and good luck to the Conservative Party. Mike was talking about how no one knew who I was back in 1994 when I was running. I can tell you, I was about as articulate then as Joe Biden is now. <laughs> I've improved. I'm not quite sure that he has. But Jerry talked about the exit poll where on the afternoon of the election, he thought I was going to win. I thought I was going to win. I remember I was campaigning in, in uh, Penn Station 
with Howard Stern and people going back to Long Island, we were shaking hands and everybody goes, Pataki, you're great. They're actually saying Howard Stern is great, but we'll vote for you anyway. And it was a very it was a very interesting afternoon and I go, I'm gonna win. And then we go to dinner, Alphonse and Charlie Gargano and some others. And the polls come over the radio. The exit poll said Pataki's gonna lose by four points. I go, oh my god, I'm gonna for the first time, really, I thought I was going to lose. And then Alphonse is there, and he goes, "Ah, oh, you're not going to lose. I was just on the boardwalk in the Island Park, and I met this woman who came out of the supermarket. She said she's voting for Pataki. Clearly, you're going to win. Then, <laughs> brilliant logic. Brilliant logic. And then my strategist who was there goes, no, the exit polls are always right. You're going to lose. Then you have no chance of winning. And sure enough, 8 o'clock at night, the exit poll said the Republican running for governor in New Jersey, or senator, losing by three points. New Jersey closes at 8. 8.15, the Republican running for senator in New Jersey lost by three points. So I'm driving to the Hilton that night. And for the first time, I'm going, oh my god, I lost. You know, uh, uh, and it wasn't so much about me. It was about the state, uh, because I saw the state going down the tubes. And I knew that with people like you helping, we could turn it around. And then I went up to the room, and the results card started coming in. And I know we have a few people from Erie County here. Pat, where are you, Senator? And so many others from Erie County. And around 9.40 that night, the then chairman of Erie County, uh, Tom Reynolds, calls me. And he speaks loud enough where without a mic you could hear him in Times Square right now. Yeah. And he's screaming, Pataki, you're the governor, you're the governor. And this was before the TV came on. Yeah. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, you carried Erie County, which is where Buffalo is. And no Republican for governor, including Rockefeller and Teddy Roosevelt, had never carried Erie County. And you know why I carried Erie County? Because it was working, blue-collar, ethnic Democrats. And they understood that the policies that the Democrats always say are for the people were for them and not for the people. They were the ones losing jobs. They were the ones living in dangerous communities. They were the ones who couldn't make ends meet because the taxes were too high. And I carried Erie County because of the conservative principles that I ran on. And I've always, I've always believed, I've always believed it's not about having a title and winning an election. It's about what you do. And with your help the whole way through, I'm not going to look back that much. We have one million fewer people on welfare than when I took office when I left office. We went from the most dangerous state in America, you can't believe it now, to the safest large state in America. We went from being last in jobs to having 750,000 million more private sector jobs. We had $147 billion in tax cuts, more than the other 49 states combined. And with the help of so many in this room, after we were horribly attacked on September 11th, we rebuilt Ground Zero and Lower Manhattan. And I'll tell you, if ever, if there was ever something that mattered to all of you and to me, it was to show the terrorists and show the world that we weren't going to shrink and hide after those hideous attacks. We were going to rebuild and not just get back to where we were, but soar to new heights. And every time I come into the city and I look down and see the Freedom Tower, 1,776 feet tall, it reminds me of the sacrifice of those who died on September 11th and the courage of so many who responded. So Mike, Chairman Long, talked about how I ran against the liberal icon, Mario Cuomo. And it was important to be a liberal with a conservative. Now, the Democratic Party isn't liberal. They're nuts. <laughs> They've gone off the deep end. You know, a liberal Democrat actually looks sane compared to the candidates and the members of Congress they have out there. Open borders, free health care for people who come here illegally, abortion up to the last minute, it's not abortion, it's infanticide, Incl including, according to the nut governor of Virginia, even after the baby is born, they have completely lost their mind. And by the way, the nut job in Queens should know, I have some cows on my farm upstate, and yes, they do every now and then poop 
I'm not getting rid of them because your lunatic Green Deal thinks that somehow that with not using straws is going to save the planet. Let me tell you, you're going to ruin the planet. You're not going to save it. So, so I'm not running for anything, but there are a number of people here are, and our ideas were right then. They're more, they're as right and more important now. Our candidates getting elected matter then. It matters more now. And I know there are a number of you running here, but I just want to point out one who used to work for me, who's running for Congress, uh, and Letitia knows her very well, as do I. And she used to work for me, but despite that, she still has an edge, is going to win this race. Nicole Milliotakis running in Staten Island. And as important as it is to turn around this state, we have got to get rid of Adam Schiff and the people who are trying to overturn the will of the people of America in an undemocratic way. And the call, you will be an important step towards achieving that. We have absolutely essential races next year. Work hard. Don't give up. Jerry said we had a tough year last year. We're going to have a great year next year because our ideas are right. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your friendship. And just go win everything. Thank you.